the way. Like, oh, I'm being recorded. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Okay, I won't say what started. I was going to say. <laughs> We're starting to... Uh -huh. <laughs> Welcome everybody. We're gonna launch with some intros, and you're being recorded. So if that's a problem, keep things on the DL. Yeah, no, no, no problem here. So I am a ex experienced designer, pr producer, project manager of themed experiences. Um, I'm actually right now um, live from one of the experiences I've designed. I'm in outer space. I'm uh, traveling at twelve thousand miles an hour and um, with super really good Wi-Fi and no uh, delay here. No I'm kidding. Starlink, um, literally. <laughs> but uh, um, my experience with AI, um, you know, initially it was to help me put together recipes. I'm a personal chef as well, um, with clients for clients who had uh, a lot of special needs and everything. And uh, that didn't actually work out as well as I thought it would. Um, but uh, now I actually did sign up for one of Dougie's classes through um, an event he put on and I'm, I'm slowly going through it and I'm learning to uh, hone my voice as a writer and really enjoy writing. And so I use it for that and I've had a lot of fun with that and then also helping it, using it to sort of retool my resume, look at other ways to say things cool yeah. great Gilles you're next on my um screen why don't we go um so where you're at where you're calling from what your current uh, AI experience is and what you might hope to learn well uh I'm currently in uh Chandler Arizona um the uh weather has finally decided to cool down a bit which is nice um I uh let's see I, I I've kind of dabbled with in chat GPT a little bit but uh mostly superficial stuff. Uh, uh, I recently uh, went on Discord and uh, I've been playing around with Mid Journey um, just to create some uh, visuals. And uh, what I'd like to be able to do is see how I can uh, maybe take some of those Mid Journey uh, visuals and animate them and, uh, you know, make some, you know, maybe some short uh, movies, just some uh, short animation, you know, content with mm -hmm. us great james you're next and hey hey james shaw here from los angeles um my experience no experience with ai yet i'm just intrigued and uh i figured a good way to get started is to is to just start to listen in on things like this and listen to your first uh your first uh, presentation um earlier um, in preparation for this, and uh, it's very interesting. Um, I look forward to um, after this, uh, you know, after the solstice and into the new year to um, to begin exploring uh, how I might use this. A particular, very specific um, goal of mine, immediate goal that I would like to use AI for, uh, not you know, less about exploration than just simply using it as a tool, is that I heard that. Um, that it can pass the bar exam. And so I was like, well, you know, I'll bet it could write a complaint then. And I have two major litigations I'm dealing with as a non-lawyer that um, I'm hoping to um, write cross complaints for. And I'm super excited about what that, uh, what the tool could do in the way of supporting me that way. So cool. that, yeah, and uh, the weather here is absolutely gorgeous as LA tends to be. And uh, I'm really grateful for that. Great. Well, I got yeah. it interesting. When you emailed me, I, I read it as compliant. And um, I've actually got a pretty interesting tool to share with you later. So um, stick around. Great. So uh, Lisa, you're next. Hi, Doug. Thank you for doing this. I, I'm Lisa. I'm based out of Boston. I'm just south of Boston. So I a couple of weeks ago, I was part of an AI social challenge. It was really interesting. It, it seems that it's mostly the way you word the prompts, which actually are paragraphs long, which I had no idea I was putting in one sentence. Um, so I'm building out my coaching business. I'm an executive coach. Um, and so I'm building out a digital course as well. So email funnels, you and I were on the DCA challenge together. Um, really looking to streamline that process because 30 weeks of email content is makes me want to just go hide in a cave somewhere <laughs> <laughs> totally drafting all of that content so doing that in minutes sounds fabulous fun great yeah. uh barrett are you there we can't see you but maybe we can hear you 
Hey, yes, I am. Uh, my name is Barrett. Um, I'll be off camera for bandwidth issues, but I've played around with AI and particularly chat GBT, a little bit of mid journey for the past month and some change. Uh, I'm really interested in the mid journey part of it because I'm working on a book series and I need to create some dynamic images. So that's where my real interest is, but anything AI right now, I want to be able to sit in on and see what I can learn because there's so much functionality and it's growing so fast that I kind of want to stay in the fold and not get left behind with what the technology is doing. Yeah. And I'm calling from LA. Cool. All right. Good to know. And then last but not least, we have Robert. Oh, we lost Robert. Okay. Well, if he comes back, then great. All right. Well, since I enforced introductions, I should probably do one of myself. Uh, I'm going to share my screen just to give you guys, most of you know me, but at least to give you a little background. Um, here we go. Um, all right. So can you all see my screen? Okay, great. Uh, so what are we going to talk about today? So, I mean, AI has such a profound opportunity to really influence so many areas of our life. Uh, a lot of people are concerned about it. A lot of people are super gung-ho about it. A lot of people are kind of somewhere in the middle where they know it's going to be interesting and useful. They're not quite sure what they could do with it yet. Um, there's a lot of creative people that are concerned, similarly, just everyone else, but a lot of creative people who are using this with amazing, um, this amazing new tool to even boost their creativity. There's people using it to <clears throat> tweak their life from their diet to their behaviors. There's plenty of people using it in the business world, and it's really got some profound implications across all areas. So it's an exciting time uh, to be here. All right, so who am I? <clears throat> My background is a lot of uh, design and creative work, uh, branding, websites, um, a lot of copywriting, the whole digital marketing um, sort of spectrum copywriting. I've written a couple of books. And in general, I just love helping people use technology to really um, amplify their um, their workflows, increase their the ease of their life, all that kind of stuff. So that's what makes me really happy. And, uh, and so to that end, my, yep, here we go. So I've done a couple of things that uh, sort of all pieced together at this point. Mindshare is an event series that I've done um, almost 200 events over better part of a decade uh, before COVID and dealt with a lot of presenters and a lot of business folk from all different background, backgrounds. Um, I started during COVID a digital marketing agency, like I said, doing everything from logo to launch uh, and then digital marketing beyond that. Um, and so just when COVID was kind of wrapping up and I was getting a little bit tired of just the repetitive nature of my work, um, AI started to come around really at the end of last year and I'd already written one book called The Motorcycle and the Molecule under my uh, mischievous pseudonym, Dougie Lux, but I ended up writing in 30 days, uh, my first AI creative project was Free to Roam, which is a digital uh, nomads guide for remote workers, which I'll show you a little bit more about in a second, but it was the most powerful uh, uh, opportunity like that working with uh, AI to watch this happen was so awesome. It was just really, really an interesting thing. And I decided I just wanted to increasingly develop my skills in that area and share it as best as possible with people. And then finally, a fun little thing, but uh, back in the dawn of Facebook, 2007, me and a friend went around the world in tuxedos, raising money for charity. It was called the Tuxedo Travels. And we gave 100% of the profits to the communities that we uh, came into contact with. So it was super fun. So now that you know a little bit more about me, I wanted to just show you, this was the book, the first kind of AI project I did. Uh, 30 days, I even cloned my voice uh, and it read the audiobook. It was just a really profound experience to watch the AI create structure, allow me to enter or to in, um, put my personal stories and experiences for each of the, to kind of illustrate each of the chapters and sections, and then to watch as it kind of did the grunt work of really like, you know, putting that into um, the, uh, you know, the the text. And I had trained it on my, trained it on my tone of writing style. So it was really cool just to watch it come together and it got great reviews and even hit the Amazon bestseller list for a brief period. So um, it just blew me away. So <clears throat> bringing it back to today, what we're going to cover, 
Um, <clears throat> we asked, uh, we got some questions that I think I'm going to cover a, a bunch of those things. Um, if I don't, by the end, there'll be still some time. And uh, if you haven't seen my first uh, workshop from last week, because I'm doing these through the end of the year, it's really a packed one. I wanted to do a little bit less today, leave some more spaciousness to ask questions and as I go. So that's going to be, uh, last one was um, action packed. This one's going to be a little bit, uh, I'll just going to introduce a couple of tools and try to answer all your questions. Okay, so one thing I'm going to talk about is GPTs and how it's different from ChatGPT, and I'll get into that in a second, but it's a new announcement that just happened a couple of weeks ago from OpenAI, and it's very profound, uh, the implications of it. It's almost as big as the announcement itself was a year ago. <clears throat> I'm going to share something, uh, introduction, this is why James and anyone else who's just beginning to get a handle on this stuff, this will be a great one because I'm going to introduce a little bit more about prompting and the use of a tool that I just created called the prompt prompter, uh, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, I can answer questions at that point too about prompts. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna talk about is um, the, the, something I've been working on and it's developing uh, custom GPTs. Again, it's related to that topic, which I'll cover in a second, uh, for brands or organizations or nonprofits to be able to benefit from having kind of like an always ready to go custom version of chat GPT. Um, and, and what those benefits are, we can talk about. Uh, of course, I got a little sales pitch at the end, which of course you could stay or, you know, but if you have to dip out, that's also totally fine. But I got some fun advanced um, courses and in information that might be beneficial to some of you. And so on that note, we're going to head on over to ChatGPT. Now, before I do, I thought I would just share something really fun that I did with my um, nephew. And I think it was somewhere... Uh, let's see, I might have to do a reload here. But um, there was a, uh, I was waiting for dinner the other day with my nephew. I wonder if it's, um, okay, so it's under sci-fi story. And I started with the prompt prompter, um, which I'm going to show you in a second. But literally while I was waiting for dinner with my little 10-year-old nephew, I asked um, to have GPT to write a short story set in the future where AIs become the primary form of government focusing on the daily life of a rebel artist. Now, AI gave me most of that prompt and I was able just to tweak it. Well, right off the bat, it produced a pretty fun 10 chapter story uh, that was like right there. That was all in one response. And then I was, and it was all about this artist. And I can show you as the pictures unfold, I asked it to do section by section. It looked at its own summary of the, um, the, the book chapter or section and it created an image out of it. And so here's the image depicting this futuristic landscape. And so there's this kind of rebellious artist who's more organic and chaotic in this uh, realm of organization. And her pictures were kind of subversive and they caused, you know, uh, inefficiencies in the system and these secret, um, secret uh, meetings were created. And then of course, eventually she, well, she did this great piece um, talking about the dance of AI with humans. And by the way, all of these images were created right here in ChatGPT. And the, the recent paid version, $20 a month, allows you to do this and a whole lot more, which I'll share in a second. So it's really worth your $20 because increasingly you're not going to have to leave ChatGPT as much. It's going to start absorbing a lot of functions and features that other apps of other apps that are out there. So um, anyways, eventually the AI caught on and decided they needed to crack down and uh, Lyra as her name, the artist was put on trial by this AI assisted governance machine and she gave her case. And uh, eventually there was a rebellion of color and, and uh, expression. And then in time, AI and humans uh, based off of Lyra's message began to coexist and uh, created this beautiful world. You know, this image for the epilogue captures a serene futuristic city scene symbolizing the peaceful coexistence of humanity and AI in the aftermath of Lyra's influence. So, <laughs> so that was so crazy that AI itself created this story about the tension that we're even feeling right now. Um, and so I just thought that that would be a fun place to start this, um, this little uh, workshop. But it also, the way I came to this was with something called the prompt prompter. And so if you're like me, um, which you may be, 
you may have seen so many things being like, hey, here are the top tips on uh, the top prompts for X, Y, or Z, or here's a list of 500 prompts. Maybe even late night Instagram, like me, bought a few of these databases of prompts. And also, if you're like me, maybe you haven't really looked at any of them. So <clears throat> this was kind of like, the bane of my existence for a little bit. And uh, I was like, I need to look at those sometime. I need to, and I realized I was kind of going about it the wrong way. And I, I was like, okay, well, I'll get to them at some point. Well, a few weeks ago, ChatGPT released something called the um, uh, GPTs. Okay. And so custom GPTs are kind of like um, apps that sit on top of ChatGPT and you can access them and create them. That's the exciting part. Uh, if you have the paid version. And so if you can imagine, ChatGPT is, and the most recent training of ChatGPT was April, 2023. So it's up to date on the world's knowledge, April, 2023. But there's ways to extend that, which the start got started with plugins. But now with these custom GPTs, <clears throat> you can kind of build really simply with no code, literally just using your language to train at the very basic, to train uh, GPT, ChatGPT to create your own custom chat GPTs. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, I'm going to just talk through a couple of examples of what I did. Um, let's start with Spanish bot. Uh, well, let's start with um, optimism bot because it was a super simple one. I'm not going to show it to you because I, I don't want to get too into it. But I basically, with my voice, told chat GPT to create this optimism bot. It even created the little logo um, right there. Uh, and I told chat GPT to make this bot a positive sounding friend that if you're feeling um, upset about something, it can give you advice. If you have issues like, uh, or issues that you wanna discuss, real world issues like the homelessness crisis in cities, it can not only um, acknowledge that and give you possible solutions, it can actually find solutions around the world of cities that are working in, uh, with their homelessness population in a really constructive way. And so, um, and then eventually you can even say, maybe just randomly tell me something inspiring to make me feel more hopeful or create a vision of the future with me, optimism bot. And so <clears throat> not only does this is a feel good thing as a fun first experiment, but it uh, it actually is applicable. It like actually has solutions and that's really exciting. Um, it's not just kind of feel good, but actually it's potentially action-based. So this was the first one I did. So that's the basics of you, what you can do with a, a custom chat GPT. You can create a flavor. So Sarah, for example, with your tone or, um, you know, like say you're writing a book, you can actually train a chat GPT to have your tone in, in it, which is really exciting. Um, so you can do that with regular chat GPT, but every time you then start a new chat, you need to train it again. So in the simplest way, these custom GPTs sit there on my left hand side and they're always I can always start a new chat and it's already got all that training in there so that's what's exciting about it that's the basic example a little bit more advanced is Dougie Luxbot like my author alter ego Dougie Lux has two books okay so now I tr this is the next level uh, I created Dougie Luxbot to um, be a, a like sort of a alter ego for my alter ego in such that it's this bot that speaks in the tone of Dougie Lux, trained on his text, uh, answers questions related to his books, gives quotes and things like that. And then I uploaded the books and that's a total of 500 pages of text, which I uploaded as PDFs into the custom GPT. So now not only is it just a description of what you want the custom GPT to do, but actually it has new knowledge that you've given it custom knowledge. And so now we can start to see, like I'm working with one client on a project where he's got thousand minutes of transcribed audio. And we've now inputted that into his own custom research GPT so that he can begin to parse and work with large amounts of uh, custom content that he's created. You could never do that with regular GPT, right? So you think about that, it's pretty exciting. So uh, the two that I wanted to talk about that I created that are really useful tools, well, I created the prompt prompter. And so this is gonna be the first one that I wanna show you. Now the prompt prompter uh, is an answer to that problem that I was, first of all, does everyone kind of get what um, these custom GPTs are? Is there any clarifying questions before I get into the prompt prompter? Okay. So 
for the prompt prompter, this was a solution. And I just want to kind of get you used to the idea of thinking about these um, custom GPTs as something creative, creative solutions to little niche problems you might have. So what was my problem? Well, I'd probably downloaded about 10 different PDFs with hundreds of prompts in them. And they're all disorganized and I just didn't even know where to start. Then I realized, well, that's not the right way to deal with these prompts. First of all, it's not the right way to deal with them in like my PDF viewer. The right way to deal with them will be right in the system that I am wanting to use the prompts with, right? So I was able to upload those uh, PDFs right into my custom GPT. And now I can literally ask prompt prompter, first of all, what are your, like, how can you help me? Um, and it's going to say, by the way, can you guys see my entire screen or is this like the image, the, um, so you can't see the little screenshots of your heads. Okay. Cause it's kind of keeping up some of my window, but I think zoom removes that. Okay. So right off the bat prompts and prompter is like, here's what some of the things I can help with specific inquiries, task oriented guidance, expert prompt crafting, creative and adaptive responses, subcategory suggestions for businesses and organizations and knowledge source from the uploaded files, okay? So that's cool. Um, it's gonna say, what would you like to start by telling me your field of interest? And like, maybe I'm not sure yet. And so I wanna actually ask, well, um, tell me what categories of prompts you can help with. And so now what it's gonna do is go through all of those PDFs and actually parse them into um, an organized, sort of structure that I could work with. So maybe some business and entrepreneurship prompts were in one document, others were in another document. Well, now it's kind of collated them into these, uh, it's, and it's gonna look through and organize all of those sections into whatever it can find in there. And so, for example, I can look, if I wanted to focus on business and entrepreneurship, I could say, uh, tell me, or give me more exam, or give me some um, top, prompt examples about number one, which was business and entrepreneurship. And so now I was gonna look into those documents and give some examples of prompts. You know, Could you help me create a business plan outline for a tech startup focused on sustainable energy solutions? You know, And these are all things that you could uh, actually then um, replace the, you know, the details with. What are the key factors to consider in a market analysis for launching an eco-friendly clothing line? but you would obviously change it for your um, use cases, right? Um, so this is kind of uh, one way to work with it. Literally, you could then ask, um, you could then go into any one of these and really start to explore. You could also ask it like, okay, um, now to uh, your point, Lisa, you're a course creator and you wanna maybe use AI, um, you could do this even in ChatGPT. It might be a little bit better in Prompt Prompter. And I'm going to share it Prompt Prompter with all of you that attended. So I can send you the link after this and you can just start to play around and see actually some of this stuff might be just as good in regular ChatGPT. Others, if you have the paid version, then you can access Prompt Prompter and it'd be interesting to compare and just let, give me feedback. But I could say like, you know, just I want to, what I want to drive home here is the opportunity for you to really start treating um uh, ChatGPT, like a advisor that you go back and forth with. So you might not know how to deal with it, but you could say, okay, as a course creator, what um, is a prompt that I could use to help me create an outline or a course? Okay, and so now Prompt Prompter will use its knowledge that um, we've uploaded, but also it will. It can also use all of ChatGPT's knowledge um, that it did that it has from the the, the world of uh, the internet to ask you this. So, so this was going to actually give uh, us an example um, of a prompt, and this prompt guides ChatGPT to focus on. This sort of explains it. But so you could take this, and we can put it down here. And um, oops, that was something I just message to you, James. Um, so can you help me create a detailed course outline? And you can be specific outline. Uh, uh, let's see, three module outline, oops, three uh, course, three module course outline for, um, like Lisa, what's your area of uh, 
uh, or what's your topic? And then I'm going to ask you your target audience. I'm using neuroscience secrets for sustainable executive success in a burnout world. So essentially using neuroscience to prevent burnout. Uh, like say professionals, right? Professionals who want to avoid burnout. Right. So, um, yeah, and then you can just sort of like tweak this accordingly if you wanted to, but let's just see right off the bat. And obviously you can play a lot with those specifics and the more specific that you get, um, you can really begin to, with the target audience, um, with the topic, with your background, because you can also begin to say like what your background is, is like knowing that I have a, an authority in X, Y, or Z, um, it's going to know you and what you're able to teach. So this is going to be probably a little bit more vague, but guess what? It's at least a structure to start working on, which is really, really cool. Um, okay, so this is like the basics of prompt prompter, but I want to just show you that like right off the bat, there's so many directions that you can go with this and it really becomes an autodidactic tool for learning. You can come back to this and say like, hey, I'd love to learn. And you can do this in ChatGPT. You can, what I'm trying to drive home is like, you can ask ChatGPT to, this is the first technology to ever do this, a technology that helps you learn how to use itself. You can say to ChatGPT, hey, I'd like to write a story, a kid's story. Uh, how can you help me go about that, right? And it's gonna tell you, and then you can kind of work with it. And that's really the collaborative opportunity. So um, so that's kind of prompt prompter and a general overview of prompts. Before we move on, I thought it would be um, good to uh, just uh, turn it back over to the group and say, was there anything about prompts, prompt prompter, custom GPTs that uh, you want to clarify before we move on to the next thing? Good. Oh, Philip, you're back. Great. I thought I scared you off last week. I'm happy that you came back. <laughs> uh, Lisa, go ahead. The prompt prompter, help me understand. So that is based on what you put into it. So all those PDFs of the prompts that you've collected versus all of the, is there a way to ask it? I don't know if this is the right question, but there are how many people in the world using it? So can you provide me with all of the coolest, most innovative out of the box prompts that everyone in the world is inputting and create that? I mean, I, I think, is it limited to just the PDFs that you No, put in there? we could. Um, and I would encourage you, especially if you don't have the paid version yet, I'm going to send prompt prompter to everybody. And then it'd be fun for you just to play with it and be like, what's the difference if I ask vanilla chat GPT, the same question versus prompt prompter. Prompt prompter has got maybe a few, a couple of thousand prompts in there that I source from different places um, that chat GPT may well have uh, uh, access to, but I gave it this really hyper structured stuff. So like that was my little experiment with this chat GPT. But you can imagine if you have a research project, you want to give it that specific data uh, and tell it to use just that data. Like I could tell it just to use those attached documents, but it's using everything it can. Um, one of the things is you're not getting live results with ChatGPT. Like I said, it was just trained on April, 2024. It doesn't have the latest information in it. So the latest prompts aren't in there. So just a fun thing to experiment with and see what results you get. Um, and also, of course, you can pour into Google and be like, what are the best prompts for a real estate agent and just get curious. But it's nice because a lot of this stuff you can do right within chat GPT. So I'd recommend trying to do a few different approaches. Okay, thank you. Yeah, cool. Anything else before we move on? All right, so um, let me see. I, what I wanted to cover next was how many of you um, currently use AI in any business related tasks. And that can be from your marketing to uh, automations to data analysis. Is anybody using it in any interesting ways? And if not, does anybody have like any really tedious, like I would love to just popcorn this. Is there any tedious tasks that you have in your day 
that you just like really are not excited about doing your day or your week, that sort of task that you're like, I just hate this because it's possible that there's a way to streamline it. So is there anything that sticks out in people's minds of like a pain point in their day-to-day -day work that they'd like to just share? Go ahead, Philip. Yeah, I get a lot of news feeds and there's a lot of duplication among them. It'd be great to have a tool that uh, went through all, all 12 news feeds and just cut out the duplicates. Oh, interesting. So are you talking about uh, newsletters? No, basically Google Google news feeds. Okay. Where I'm, I'm asking it about uh, emerging technologies and news stories. And mm. I get like duplicate news stories all over the place. That's really but fascinating. To them. Yeah. And are they, they're like um, the same topic, but different links or the same link, um, but like different titles? Like how does that? No, it's the same link. It's, it's duplicates. <clears throat> That's it's a really fascinating task. Story. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, I don't know if I'll be able to answer. Not too simple for AI. <laughs> I don't, I mean, I think that would be really fascinating. I would, I love challenges. So I would love for you to email me what you're looking at and let me think about it because there are some ways and it could want to be one of those things that you can handle with a chat GPT because I'm, or the custom GPT because I'm going to show you something interesting in a second. It's the next level of chat GPTs that I've just started playing with really as of this week. Like I say, a lot of this is super new. So we're all just learning it. Okay. Um, yeah, but remember to shoot me an email. I'd love to look at it and see if I could do something cool. All right. Uh, any other things that pain points uh, day to day? Like uh, one thing I, I'd love to talk about a pain point of my own is coming up with digital uh, marketing content. And so uh, that was something that for me, uh, like ideas for the week. And I, I'm doing a lot of social media right now because I'm wanting to just like rev that up for myself again. And um, and so what I thought would be cool is to create kind of like a brand bot. Um, and that is like a custom GPT that completely understands my brand. Uh, it's, you know, tone of voice, it's mission and values, it's target audience. Um, you know, what their pain point is, how my solution can solve that pain point, what my products are ser and services are that are related to that, um, you know, solving that and possibly even come up with fun stuff like uh, like how it could produce content for me related to that. So, and what's interesting, Philip, is I actually just integrated a news feed system to it. So I want to show you um, the inaugural uh, brand bot that I've been building. And I think this is, and I'd love to get your all's opinion if this is kind of useful and maybe even like what other features this could have that could be helpful to, to you as like business owners or solo entrepreneurs. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. And um, I'm gonna go back to, to ChatGPT and I've got uh, something called the, um, these are all ones that I created, Spanish bot, just to give you a few other ideas. Spanish bot I uploaded, I actually got, I took a, uh, about a half hour of my dialogue or maybe it was 10 minutes. I transcribed it, I uploaded it right in ChatGPT and asked it to analyze my top used phrases and words. I put all those phrases and words into a spreadsheet and then I uh, uploaded that spreadsheet to ChatGPT and made a Spanish bot that would test me Spanish word, uh, the Spanish uh, of phrases, or it would speak the phrase to me in Spanish. Because the theory is, if you learn languages, use the words, learn the words and phrases you use most first. So I just wanted to try it with an Excel spreadsheet, and I can literally do it. It's even free now. There's on the app, ChatGPT app. You can talk to ChatGPT even with your phone screen off, which I really think is going to be the future of OS and operating systems. A lot of things are going to move to voice. So, um, you know, just start playing with it. Start playing with like having ChatGPT on and you talking to it and exploring things as you go for a walk as an autodidactic tool for learning. It's really fascinating. So that was one idea. Um, I made a little LinkedIn. It analyzes LinkedIn stuff. Uh, you know, I'm just playing with different ideas. But this was the big thing, Project Fresh brand bot. Okay, so my brand is Project Fresh. And so what I did, I've started to train this, and this is a lot more complicated than these other ones. Um, I've started to train it on all of my brand information, um, including not only the tone of voice and my products and services, um, it's also, uh, also even my posting schedule. So I can actually say something simple, like um, create a LinkedIn link in post 
uh, about the importance of, I don't know, something mundane. How about like just email marketing? Um, so right off the bat, this is now going to, um, in my voice, uh, it's going to first search and make sure that it's up to date on the latest tone, um, the latest, uh, you know, products and services related to the brand. So it does a little search and usually it, it just does that once or twice. And then um, it starts to get quicker because uh, then hopefully it keeps it kind of in its memory, right? So let's see what it said for, um, so the idea is that you could do this in chat GPT, but I didn't have to train this on my tone of voice or my products and services. Um, it immediately should start to sound a little bit like me. And also it knows my authority, my who I am. Um, and it sort of, so it speaks like me, it references my website, my products. And in this case, I gave it an example of um, a topic that I wanted to use. So, and this is all pretty cool, like pretty cool stuff. And this is like where I might want to then take that and um, personalize it a little bit, edit it, but even give me some hashtags, which is nice. And look at this. So um, I, this has been a brand new experiment, but I'm actually seeing if it could uh, work with my brand colors. Like how cool would that be, right? So it's not just, so I'm gonna say, well, great. Um, can you make that image? Okay, and so it's given an example of a professional engaging graphic showing an email icon with various marketing and analytic symbols around it, reflecting the power of email marketing in the digital age. The image should use the brand colors primarily, et cetera. So let's see, now this is what's called multimodal, and this is starting to make ChatGPT really powerful in that you can not only ask it for various things like um, making that uh, into a PDF, but you can upload PDFs and you can have it analyze the PDF. So you could upload a spreadsheet, have it create a spreadsheet. In this case, right here, I've created an image. Well, I could even upload an image and say in the same image style, create more images, right? So. Right off the bat, look at that. That's like, actually, if you look at my website, Project Fresh, it's using, which is, I think literally I did this yesterday. So this is the first time I've actually tested it, create, creating an image in my brand colors. Not perfect, but it's kind of like, that's totally my background. This is totally my purple. This kind of gradient isn't really ideal, but hey, you know what? Not bad, right? So that's an example of like right off the bat, how I could just come in here and it immediately knows me, saving me a lot of time. Other things you can easily do is like, obviously for other platforms, um, create um, a uh, Twitter post for that. Um, and so now obviously I could use that image again for the Twitter post, but here's a Twitter post that summarizes that um, longer LinkedIn post. And you could even, if you wanted, um, put that Twitter in there, put that image in there, and then link to the LinkedIn. So before you know it, you're starting to, to do at least today's content, right? However, maybe you wanna think about the whole week's content. Um, well, I actually have that built in, uh, what a week looks like for me. I said, I like to use LinkedIn this much. I like to use YouTube this much. I like to use uh, Twitter and Instagram this much. And so now I can say, create um, a week of content uh, inspiration or content inspiration for me. And let's see if it does it. Um, sometimes the terminology you use isn't always, doesn't always trigger, but it's generally pretty great. So, um, okay. So it's actually asking me to, um, so this is something I got to tweak here. I'm going to refresh this page and go to a new one of these because this should know my content. And I might, I have changed some things since I last experimented with it. Cause I actually reached the limit of the sort of instructions and I start to have to get creative, but it might be because it's just asking me, it wants me to ask that specific question. So we're gonna see if this works. So hopefully it does. If not, I gotta kind of go back. And a lot of this stuff is definitely, um, you, you kind of have to massage it. So now hopefully it's gonna search its knowledge again, see where I've said, this is what I want uh, my content schedule to be. And then it's going to um, give me that content. So let's take a look. And in the meantime, if anyone's got any immediate questions, uh, feel free to, because sometimes we got to wait for ChatGPT. Just let me know. Just shout it out. All right. And so um, other things, by the way, um, I wanted to show you another, just a, a recent thing that I did with this. So 
Okay, great. So that time, based on the brand details of me uh, and the content outline I provided uh, when I programmed this, here's um, what it does. It's a little bit slow right now. Everybody's using so much chat GPT right now. It's been a little slower than it uh, usually is lately. In fact, I've heard that they even had to pause new paid signups, um, which is crazy, but uh, they want it to be so usable for the people that are paying. So um, if you're waiting to have a, a paid version, you should get on the wait list. So, okay, obviously on Monday, I said, I want, this is what I wanted. On Tuesday, this is what I wanted. And so now it's actually even creating a nice little short video um, for me, which is great. Um, and it'll continue to uh, to do this stuff. Lisa, you got a question? Yeah, see how it's outlining some amazing ideas, but it doesn't mm -hmm. give you the content. So are we able to, uh, this is as far as I've gotten right here. Right. To say, okay, can you write out that Instagram story for Monday? And does it give you the content based on knowing your books and your website? And Right, right. So um, let's ask it. So I'm going to stop this, but but ultimately, whatever your content framework that you put in there, it might just be one Facebook post a day, in which case it will just do Facebook posts. Um, that's sort of what it will give you. But let's um, let's ask it. Let's take that <clears throat> and say, give me a, uh, well, so an Instagram story is you talking about something. So maybe that wasn't the best uh, example. Um because yeah, like monty has got share an inspiring quote about creativity and AI in the workplace. That's what you so got. Write that inspiring post for you. Right, exactly. So you would say, um, right. So can you repeat that question? So I see under Monday, the oh, Instagram yeah. story, we could cut and oh. paste. Say, can you create this Great. for me? Great. And let's just do that and say, share yeah, and inspiring. I would say, um, give me an inspiring quote about creativity and AI in the workplace. All right, so, and this is a great, this is a really great question. I'm actually write it down um, to uh, see about having um, chat write the actual posts, not just ideas. <clears throat> great, so here we go, uh, creativity in the workspace. And you know, you could actually say, rewrite this. And I wanna show you this little tool. Here's this pencil. You can say um, that pencil, if you saw it's right there, it's subtle, but you click it and that allows you to change the um, previous uh, prompt that you gave it. So give me an inspiring quote from a famous person uh, about, okay, so you might wanna actually give credit because then you could maybe have the image. Um, and now you might want to double check that this Kai Fu Lee actually said this before you post it. Generally, it's pretty. It's gotten pretty accurate, much more accurate. But sometimes it gets a little crazy. Uh, anyway, so now you see that this. Just so you know how this function works, you can go back to the original one. It sort of branches. Uh, if you want to compare uh, results, that's just a good little trick to know in your Chat GPT um, that that's how that pencil works, and then the branches. Okay. So the last thing I want to show everybody with this brand bot today is the latest thing that I just worked on, which is. Um, you can actually say uh, to, to this, I've just integrated, and this was a really complex thing. It took me a while to do, but uh, I'm beginning to work on now, not just giving the GPT instructions or giving the GPT attached documents uh, related to the brand or whatever text you want it to have knowledge about, but integrate it with um, other external sor sources. And in this case, this is where things start to get really powerful. Um, and Gilles, I see you got a question. I'll just uh, wait uh, to start this next prompt and then I'll ask you. So what I'm gonna say right in here is give me um, a recent news, give me five, sorry, five recent news articles related to my brand. Okay, and so now what it's gonna do is look at some aspect of my brand and it's going to go through to the latest Google News sources um, and look at kind of like, uh, you know, what it, what it can find that's related to some aspect. Okay, and so because I'm my part of my brand is a lot of business people helping business people that work, um, 
then it's found this. So it's, some of this stuff could be really interesting for me because then what I could do is, um, and this is the part that, you know, should blow blow our minds a little bit if it works right. So, the, okay, great. So top AI people in finances. I kind of like this one. Can AI really be an asset to creative people at work? So what I could do is come here. It, it can't yet understand what's in the article um, yet, but what you can do is literally take this big blog post and bring it back into chat GPT and say, um, uh, create a blog post for me uh, that um, uh, sort of summarizes this um, content, the following content. Uh, and, and let's just see, I've actually instructed it when we create content to um, in, in, um, infuse the blog post or the content with my product, some aspect of my products or services. So let's see. And while that does its thing, um, Gilles, uh, you had a question. And uh, you're muted. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, so uh, I, I really like the idea that um, it can improve on itself. So if you've written a prompt, you can ask it to um you know refine its its own prompt your prompt is that correct yeah and yeah. then mm -hmm. and then uh, have you played with that have you found that like it's pretty good at doing that or after you know some number like three or four iterations that it just kind of starts falling apart um or does it just constantly improve i mean is there are there diminishing returns at some point I mean, it's interesting. It's gotten a lot better at keeping um, keeping its thing. In fact, I'm really surprised keeping its like knowledge of what it's written. I'm surprised that this is so um, so as long as it was, because I said summarize. It seems like it's almost as long as the article. So, you know, what I could say is like, that's way too long. Um, you know, come back here. And actually, I got to click the little pencil at the bottom. Where is it? Oh, here. So now I could actually come right back in here and say, uh, create a 500 word blog post for me that summarizes the following content and um, and uh, includes um, a, um, let's see, includes one of my services uh, in it and it promotes so let's see if this is better. And um, while that's, so yeah, to your point, it's gotten a lot better at like keeping, maintaining the thread. Um, so that's really good. Uh, sometimes it does seem like it goes off track and that's like, we just gotta be patient with it. Like kind of go back with that pencil and tweak it, make little refinements. Um, but there can be sometimes an, an aspect of like a photocopy of a photocopy um, that like we're trying to, um, you know, trying to tweak so also you had a question too about like uh, and we're not really getting into it too much today about like the graphic stuff but as you can see this kind of summarized uh what the article was about and then this incorporated some of my stuff that i work on uh you know helping businesses navigate practical and ethical challenges of ai integration etc and then it kind of wraps up so it's really powerful um and so you know um Gilles, while i got you there and I wanted to talk to you about your like the graphic stuff too. But before we do, is there any questions um, related to brand bot? And is that something that people think would be useful? Like if I did a like a course or a workshop about teaching you how to create your own brand bot, would that be something that um that people would like to see? I think that's a great idea. Cool. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Neat. And it's like I would love, you know, now that you understand, like of basics, I wanted to kind of give you the overview of how custom GPTs work. There's, I think, little aspects of this that would obviously be very customizable for your particular use cases or needs. And that's where things start to get really exciting. So, um, all right, I'm gonna share my screen one more time, show you a couple of last little tips and tricks. Um, and then 
we're going to open it up. I'm going to my little final few things to share, and then we can open it up with any final questions. Okay, so first of all, I wanted to just show you that um, I, if you don't follow me on LinkedIn, uh, come on, you know, I'll send links out after this. But this is just like the kind of stuff that's going on right now with turning imagery, uh, which was not even imagery wasn't even that good, if, you know, a year ago. Now it's taking imagery and this is fully animating imagery, um, you know, but that also means, oh, and I'm going to send this to you, James. This is a full on legal GPT trained with a huge amount of legal data. So paralegals beware. This is an incredible uh, way to uh, my friend um, actually just release that GPT. Also, if you like memes, well, this these pro, um, Stable Diffusion is a company that's now animating memes. So these old memes that used to look like static are now getting breathed new life into them. Um, so that's that. I'm going to send this legal GPT out to James. And then uh, also, I'm very active on Twitter, uh, now X, and I actually have some pretty cool stuff coming out there that I share regularly. I also follow a lot of cool people on there that uh, I can um, recommend to you all if you want to stay up to date on things. Um, but just beautiful stuff that's happening with images. I could recommend if you're interested in the imagery thing, you can go on here and just go to um, prompts, like, you know, uh, prompt share, for example, you can find who's creating beautiful images and they often just, you know, create, they often just give you the prompt that they use. So for example, on my Instagram, um, every other day or so, I, I'm sharing, um, you know, like things like cool images that I created right in like, you know, chat GPT right here with a prompt that I found someone was sharing, right? Like, um, or it was actually back here. Um, yeah, so like come right on here and then right here, you can see what other images were created with it and then what the prompt was used to create that. So we're just like learning how to be more creative um, with it. So, which is so really exciting. I also um, will send you the link to my uh, YouTube because um, I do like a lot of, where's my channel? I do like a lot of, um, where's my channel? Oh, here. Yeah, I do like a lot of uh, little mini tutorials and things about, you know, and overviews of stuff. So I can send you that link and little short things too with some cool little tips and tricks. So um, on that note, I'm going to just give an overview of my last couple of things and then leave the last five minutes for um, Q&A. So, and I'll send these links out afterwards. I've got three courses currently online. Um, which is AI for courses, coaches and course instructors, which really is a very simple course. It's just like, I don't know, like four hours or so that you can do in even like a weekend uh, that allows you to put together the outline for a course um, such that you can then test it and validate it before you do all the work. And it even shows you how to create like a simple landing page and a payment system so that um, people can commit to buying it and if you get like however many people justify you then doing the work, you then create the course. And if not, you refund people and you say, hey, I'm going back to the drawing board. I'll let you know when I've announced this. But it's a great way for you to get ideas out there, but not have to do all the work. Um, AI for entrepreneurs and thought leaders goes over a lot of like content creation. Um, uh, this is actually, I mixed this up. These should be reversed. So <laughs> these are these red ones are, I need to, um, I need to re redo those. But so this is, Grow your audience with high quality, engaging content. Um, this one is the AI course uh, instructors is develop the program idea and validate it. And then the last one is to um, AI for nonfiction writers and content creators. Like I said, I've written that book. I really know the system really well to create books in very little time that are really useful and super fun. And most importantly, infused with your personal stories to make it unique to you and your tone of voice. So um, if any of those are interested uh, to you, I'm doing a webinar special. So um, it's going to be, uh, you can find all these at courses.projectfresh.com. I'll send the link out uh, again after this. And then also 20% uh, off coaching, one-on-one um, -on -one coaching. So I do packs of coaching, uh, for example, building these custom GPTs for your company or other um, helping you with other automations and, and AI Some of that I covered in the last week. So um, on that note, that is my part presentation. I'm happy to take the last chunk of time to um, answer any questions. Philip, I don't know if I don't know if anyone was else else was on my last call, but hopefully I was a little less uh, uh, bowling people over with the content today. I know we still covered a lot, but um, I tried to keep it a little bit more spacious 
And um, yeah, I'd love to hear any more questions that you guys might have. Go ahead, Gilles. So I was curious um, if you've played with uh, Midjourney and Dolly, and I know that there are going to be more of these kind of image rendering um, AIs coming out. Um, yeah, and I, I see that. I see that um, uh, the Chat GPT, like you, like you said, it it has the. I, I think it's Dolly is integrated into the Chat GPT now. Exactly. So it's able to do that, and um, and so that's kind of like two subscriptions in one because exactly. you're just paying for the chat gpt um have you noticed any like what what are the major differences that you've noticed between midjourney and and dolly is it is it really worth it to get one of those midjourney accounts um or uh are you just as well off or even better so because if you get the chat gpt you get it um you know consolidated with with so it depends uh, what your it's a great question and it depends what your use cases are mid journey is the industry standard for the best imagery like by far and away it's unbelievable uh now so if you're really using it for something that you require like the best control um it's unparalleled for something like a lot of our uses, fun illustrations, images for blogs, um, Dolly, which is now integrated, like you say, into the chat GPT subscription is totally doable. You can even tell it to do a ratio of 16 by nine or square or, you know, four by three or whatever. And it will, it will do that now, which is really nice. Um, and so I compare them like it's uh, not it's still Dolly is getting better and better. Not as good as mid journey, but the other ones you might want to check out. That start to bring uh, life to it is um, Runway. Runway is a, a really great stable diffusion. Again, that's also they've just added video. I think stable diffusion or Runway, one of those two has a motion brush, which you can now start to just paint on the areas of a scene that you want to add motion to. And so, yeah, it's just it's moving really fast. The whole world of the imagery creation. I may do a whole like workshop on that. But for me right now, and a lot of like my work. Um, I'm focusing more on like the content creation in terms of the text and then the occasional little graphic to go with it. I'm not doing tons of super crisp imagery or video just yet. Um, it's really easy to go down all these different rabbit holes. But it, one of the things, if, you know, one thing I drove home today was like the ability for you just to be curious with how you approach these things. The other thing that I would say is as you get into AI to really just like um, be clear with what you need from it, because it's really easy to go down rabbit holes and feel like, God, there's a million things I need to keep up on. There is, you know, and I open up tabs all the time and then I close them or bookmark them and say like, okay, that's cool, but it's not relevant to me right now. And so really like knowing what's relevant. And that's why I come back to the, again, that other recommendation of just being curious, like what are the aspects of your life or your job that you're struggling with that you don't enjoy? And is there a way knowing that like language is the future programming language, like voice is the future programming language, which is so crazy. Um, can you elicit clearly what your problem is in a way that you may well be able to ask AI itself how it can help you. Um, and if you can speak clearly and uh, address what your um, issues are, then um, then it may well just have a solution to make your day better. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, cool. That was a long answer. But um, all right, so I haven't been checking out the chats uh, at all. So if anyone hasn't uh, in this last minute or so, I'm happy to stick around. Um, I will wrap it up here because it is for to say that anybody who wants to sign off, you're welcome to do so. Thank you so much for joining. It's been a real pleasure. I'll do a follow-up email with all the things that we discussed today. Um, and also, uh, if you would like to stick around, I'm, I'm here for another few minutes if anyone has any final questions or if I didn't cover anything that was in the chat. Thanks, Doug. Appreciate it. Right on. All right. Doug, have you been yeah. able to use Copilot? Last so, question, I promise. Oh, it's okay. Uh, is Copilot for, um, is it for all aspects of the Microsoft suite? Yeah, my thing is I want to take my research and and, and have it create a PowerPoint for me. Mm -hmm. I don't want to create it. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a great question. There's um a couple of different ways to work with PowerPoints. One is to, if you just want the content, you can have an idea and say, hey, I'd like this to be... Um, Again, you talk about, it's like, hey, I am a such and such is your skill. I help so-and-so is your target audience achieve whatever their goal is. Can you create like a 10 point or a 10 page PowerPoint 
the outline for a 10 page PowerPoint. And then it would give you the content and then you could bring it into like a keynote or something. That would be one way to do it. Another way is there now are specific um, PDF or PowerPoint AI creation tools out there. I think one's called like Octopus and I'd have to look. I've, I've That was one of those things again, where like uh, I made a few tabs. If you want, you can follow up with an email if, if I forget, but um, yeah, like I'll, I'll write it down. So, uh, I can see about any recent ones. So PDF or PowerPoint creation. Um, they're changing all the time. Like there's so many amazing ones now that you can literally say, hey, this is what I'm doing. And it can give you the first version of a full on graphic PowerPoint. Uh, and then you just kind of go in and you tweak the content and, and imagery. So um, yeah. And so like, and actually Canva, uh, they do have Canva's unbelievable if you haven't used it, but they have a whole new uh, magics suite of magic tools that all use AI and they may well at this point have a, a PDF or presentation um, creator. I'm not sure what the status is, but there are some in particular, some diff like specific tools that are coming out for that. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. And, and I don't mean, that's a great question. So is Copilot currently in um, PowerPoint? Is it attached to the latest version? Yeah, so my understanding is that it's for enterprise right now. It's not mm -hmm. for, uh, and I don't know. So even again, like you're saying, it changes so quickly. I think they're in beta test with just personal use. Cool. Or family, you know how they have Microsoft 365 has a family plan. Yeah. Well, let me know what you hear and I'll, uh, I'll, I've made a note to myself to follow up with you too on that. Okay. Cool. Uh, Gilles. Sorry, uh, if I just zoned don't, out, don't I'm, be sorry. I'm part of that, um, but like, uh, or, if, or if this question is redundant, but I was wondering, you know, since you're teaching these um, uh, uh, courses on AI and a lot of these, you know, I mean, once I learn and, you know, I want to, I want to subscribe and it costs a lot of money and all of that. Um, uh, do you think like open AI or uh, any of these other, um, you know, programs that I have to pay for, like that they might be at some point offering discounts through coaching programs like yours, you know, mm -hmm. where I just like, you know, promo code Dougie Lux, you know, mm -hmm. one and uh, get 20% off or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. Well, I mean, it would be nice, but I mean, I think it's, I think it's um, a great opportunity for them to kind of, uh, like take some of the like like ease ease people in who really want to learn uh also give coaches a boost yeah who want to teach it's kind of feeding its own system yeah you know? i mean at this point open ai has had to shut down new payment uh signups because they're so overwhelmed so they don't even have that issue yet um that's the, been the fastest growing I, it reached 100 million signups in a month or two months, like it's it's so fast that it's grown. It's amazing that it's even still managed, like still workable, um, thanks to like Microsoft's uh, forty nine percent ownership in it. But uh, as they're obviously giving them the computing power to continue to run it. Um, but my point being that I would say if you are going to start with a paid um, platform, starting with ChatGPT is twenty dollars a month, and you can use it for so many things that you'll just begin to and even just get curious with it and start to learn this language. Um, and also again, like you can create imagery in it. You can do a lot of fun things and just start to get create, uh, get curious with how it, and see how that, you know, it is. And if, if you don't like it, you just unsubscribe from it, but it's a, it is a great tool for better writing for uh, these other uh, advanced things that you can do with it. Creating those GPTs is, is just so valuable. Um, if you start to think about a problem that you might repeatedly have, well, you can just create a custom GPT for yourself. That's ready to go anytime to solve that problem, you know? So yeah. it could it could be worth that twenty dollars. You know that might well save you hours in your month. At which point, twenty dollars could be worth it. A lot of these other ones are like they're really cool, and I would love to spend a whole bunch of time doing cool animation stuff. But it's just like not in my immediately like in my immediate needs for work and life right now. So I haven't paid for those yet. Yeah. Oh, one more question. Um, uh, you know, I'm getting a lot of like on my Instagram feed, um, advertisements for like. Oh, you know, here's a thing just for, you know, we're going to give you 20,000 chat GPT prompts, you know, <laughs> and, you know, for the low, low price of whatever. And like, 
I mean, my assumption is that most of those are going to be garbage. Um, but I was wondering, like, since you've made your prompt, prompt bot, um, prompt prompter. Yeah. The prompt prompter, <laughs> um, which, which like appeals to me because it's, it kind of sounds like a, it's, it's scraping, you know, one of those prompt documents that's got thousands of, of those things, which is really, really smart. Um, but like, you know, how, how can you, I mean, is there a way to know the good from the bad? Like when you see those things, is it just like, are yeah. they too good to be true or most of them are redundant or what? No, I mean, well, I mean, in terms of the things that you would buy from uh, Instagram or whatnot, I mean, I bought a few and I think they help you start to understand how to frame. There's also tons of free ones just on Instagram that like literally are start to follow, you start to follow some of like the, you know, um, chat GPT, Instagram, you know, guides or like uh, folks doing a lot of that stuff. And like every day there's free content coming out. So I wouldn't even say you need to pay for that. You can go online and search best prompts for real estate agents or best prompts for whoever. That's another great way to do it. And then also I'm going to share my prompt prompter with you. So if you do have a paid account, then you can play around with that and let me know how it works. Are there any of these brands in the space that are like more reputable than, than others? in terms of prop creation thing and all of that ultimately it's the better like i'm not gonna i don't have an answer to that other than the better you can frame your prompt that's why the better we can get at language at like saying who we are who we need this for what their problem is what we want this to do all that kind of stuff like that was just one example but the clearer we can make any of that that becomes a good prompt like what I did with Lisa there to generate that course outline. That's not likely a course outline that she'd look at and be like, oh, this is totally, this nails it for me. But as soon as she starts filling it out with like what her skills are and like getting more niche with her target audience and things like that, that course outline is going to start to really get better and better, right? So that's why like testing these things is is really good. It's, it's just good practice because we're going to be doing more of this in the future. So the better we can get at asking for what we want. I mean, it's a good lesson for life. <laughs> you know? Maybe that's a good spot to leave it. Um, this has been so much fun, everybody. Thanks for joining. Um, and I will send out an, a follow-up email. And like I say, I'm going to be doing these every week with a little bit of different content every week and developments. Um, so uh, next week, Wednesday, same time, and it's going to be the same link. Uh, you don't have to re-register throughout the week. If you'd like to send me any questions to include in the next call, then feel free to do so. And um, it's been a real pleasure. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Dougie.